is Trisha and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make this a table runner. Now I've referred to it a couple of times as a quilt during my video so please forgive me. I actually meant a runner and I'm doing this sort of like I would make a quilt so that's probably why I kept saying that. So you can use the same idea that I'm doing and make this a little bit longer if you have a nice long table. Make it wider if you want. Maybe even turn it into a little lap quilt if you wish. So let's see what the supplies are going to be and how I get this made. It's super easy. It did take a little bit of time. I think it took me about four hours to make but I think it came out really pretty. All right, so here I've got some fabrics that I'm going to be using for my runner. I'm going to be cutting these squares from these. And as you can see, I've got a bundle of fabrics here. These are some larger pieces that I can get multiple squares out of. Here I've got some scraps so that I can see how big they are and see if I can get anything from there. And then I've got more little scraps here that I can also check. Now I've got some batting, some quilters batting right here. This is just a crib lightweight uh, batting that you can uh, use. You can use felt or whatever other little fabric you want to put in between. We are going to be using our iron and I've got a little bit of water so I can spritz some of the uh, fabric if it's a little too wrinkled. All right, so now uh, we'll need some items to cut my fabric with. So here I've got my rotary cutter and I don't always use that. So I highly suggest that you get one of these and that you get yourself a cutting board as soon as you are able to do so. Uh, but you can use your scissors to cut your fabric. And I've also got some measuring tape. So you can use that if you don't happen to have a straight edge ruler like what I have right here. You'll also need something to mark with, whether it's a pencil or a pen, to when you measure out your fabric so that then you can cut it with your scissors, or you could just use some pins. But we're also going to be using the pins to grab our little squares together before we sew them. All right, so to sew our little squares together, I'm going to be using my sewing machine. You can't do this by hand if you prefer to do that or if you don't have a sewing machine. So then you'll need a hand sewing needle, and of course we're going to need some thread. Okay, this is just happens to be the type of spool of thread that I happen to purchase, but you can just buy a regular spool of thread or if you already happen to have that. And don't even worry about the color. Whatever color you might have will work great because as you can see, I had a multitude of colors and prints of my fabric, so really it's not going to matter. I choose to use white because I happen to use this big spool. I use this big spool and then I fill up my bobbins, which I use one in the top as well as the one that goes at the bottom of my sewing machine. This is a very economical way of, of purchasing thread. You can order these through Amazon or you can just uh, Google and search threads and decide what kind of threads you may want to order if you can't get yourself into the stores, especially at this time. So okay, let's get to making our little squares so we can make our runner. Okay, so I'm going to start cutting out my little squares that I'm going to use in my runner. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through whatever little pieces of scraps I have first. I've already gone through all of these and these were not enough to do uh, the squares that I want. The squares that I'm going to be cutting are going to be 5 inches by 5 inches, okay? So just get fabric that's going to be enough for that. Now, I want to cut out at least two squares out of each fabric. So for example, I have this fabric here. And let's say I don't have any more of this. I only have this one. So I'm going to take it to the corner here. 5 inches, 5 inches. I know I can get one square out of this. And if I put this red one here as a little kind of a example, I know I can get one square out of this scrap, but I can't get a second one. I can only do one. So this is enough for just one little square. So it's gonna be up to you if you only, you know, if you're okay with just one little square of that particular fabric of scrap that you happen to have, which I think is perfectly fine. But let's go ahead and aim for to try and get at least two of them, two, three, or four of them at the most, okay? So let's just say this is not enough. So we can go ahead and fold this up and put it out of the way. But I do happen to have more of this fabric besides my scrap so that I know that I'll be able to get at least two squares. So I'm actually going to use this little scrap I've got this little scrap here, which happens to be close here. I put it here in the corner, and it's just a little more than five by five, so all I have to do is square it off. And then I happen to have another piece here, 
And just so that you have a good visual, I'm gonna use the red one. So I'm gonna put this right inside of that space, you know, right inside of it. And I can get another square to that so I know that I have enough of this scrap. So whatever scraps you don't have enough of, make yourself a little pile, pull those out of the way. And the ones that you do, make a little pile out of that. And we can start working with those. And then you can go into your, you know, full pieces of fabric that you happen to have. But before you go into your full pieces of fabric and start cutting them, pick out the one that you want for the backing of your table runner. I like this piece of fabric. I've already gone ahead and I've measured it. Now, I have decided that for my runner, the one that's gonna go on my table, because I have a small round table, I decided that I don't want it any more than maybe 13 inches wide and maybe 30 or 36 inches long. This fabric is more than enough. I think it's, uh, I have enough here for like 20 by 40, but because I'm gonna be doing some seams, it needs to be smaller than 20 by 40, obviously. Okay, so that's how I'm going to decide what fabric I can use for my back. And I do have others that I can choose from here, just in case. And we're not gonna cut that out until we have all our little squares done for the top part of our runner. Okay, let's move these aside. And here I have my five by five squares. Some of these I was able to get two, and some of them I was able to get four. Now, just because I was able to get four out of some of these does not mean I'm gonna go ahead and use all of them. I'm just gonna cut as many uh, little squares as I can. Now, I decided that uh, maybe I need about 27 or 30 squares for the runner that I'm going to use. Let me put these side by side so you get an idea. Now, these are five by five, like I said, and because I'm gonna do like three rows, that means I have 15 inches. But let's not forget that we're also going to have seams here, so it's going to shorten that. So that's why I said 12, 13 inches wide at the most. And because I decided that I wanted to be like 9 or 10 rows like that of uh, these little squares, I'm saying 27 or 30 inches. Of course, once I sew things, they will shrink up. So that's why I'm thinking maybe 10 squares. 10 squares going this way and three going that way. So that means all together I need 30 squares at least. I said 27 or 30, but I'm gonna go with 30. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep cutting these little squares until I have enough for the top part of my runner. And then we will cut the little trim squares once we have decided uh, the length that we're going to have and after we have sewn these little pieces together, okay? So let's start cutting those. I'm gonna start measuring five by five. You can take your uh, measuring tape and start, I'm gonna put this with a back side. You can start marking and I would choose like a straight edge. So maybe this one, measure, and this, this, these little edge seems to be nice and straight. So I can start measuring and then if I want, I can start marking with a pencil or a pen as long as you can see it, five inches, and then five inches this way. So I know that I've got five inches right here. I'm just lining it kind of more or less right here. Do a nicer job. If you have some sort of a straight edge, use that instead to line this up. Now you may not have a straight edge like this, but maybe you just have a regular, you know, little hard ruler or you have a nice, straight piece of cardboard that you can use as your edge so you can mark it out and once you have it marked out and you can see your markings i know that you can't see them here but we're just going to pretend that you've made your own markings and you can see them so just try to cut them out as nicely as you can and there's my little square now once i have this first little square you can go ahead and put it on top of another one and cut out another cut out another square and then use that as a pattern or do your pattern out of a piece of paper which might be the easiest thing to do i'm going to use my grid here so i have this little scrap and i know that i have more of this one in my larger pieces of fabric over here as a matter of fact it's right here just like i have this one to do another one of these so let's go ahead and put this on the edge and square this piece off and like I said, I'm gonna be using my rotary cutter. So I've got my straight edge here. And I cut off this little edge first to make sure that it's nice and straight. This was already straight, it's aligned very well. 
So now I'm going to cut it five inches. Oh, and you want to make sure you iron your fabrics out, so make sure that they're not wrinkled. It makes it a whole lot easier to cut them out. I mean, I've already ironed these little pieces out. But anyway, here's my little square. Let's get that little, little thread there off of there. And these are the little threads. And there we go. Now we've got that one, and I just need to cut one more, or if I want to cut, you know, three or four. I'm trying to salvage as much fabric as I can. So for now, I'm going to cut just one more, so I have at least two from this uh, particular fabric. And I'm going to be doing the same with all the other ones because I want to try and save as much fabric for other projects. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the amount that I need. And then I'm going to be back and I'm going to start laying them out in a pattern. And remember, like I said, any fabric that you need to iron out, get it on your iron, iron it out or spray it with some water. I have a little pump here with some water and iron it out if you need to do that. Okay, I'll be back once I have at least 30 squares cut out. Okay, so here I've cut plenty of squares. I'm pretty sure I have more than 30. Some of them I actually cut more than four each. I just went ahead and I cut up because uh, I had some small pieces of fabric that I was able to get like four of them, but I had enough where I could get six. It wasn't enough fabric to maybe just put away and use for something else. I felt like uh, having these little squares already cut up, I could use them for an extra uh, project just in case I do have any left over. Not only that, but I'm also going to be needing some for the trim on the edge of my um, runner. So I'm obviously going to need more squares for that. But for right now, I wanted to start off with 30. So I'm just going to grab these and just try to grab one or two of each, maybe three of each. Uh, let's see how many I have. I think there's a couple here where I've only got maybe two uh, out of a fabric. So I'm going to grab uh, 30 of them. And then I'm just going to do like a random pattern. I'm going to do three rows this way and try to do 10 rows this way and get a pattern somehow. Just mix them up so I don't have two that are next to each other or you know, relatively close to each other. And then um, if I don't, for some reason, I don't have enough or enough randomness in my fabric, I have a little bit more fabrics that I can cut out of. But I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna go ahead and start choosing uh, some fabrics. I have these that are the same as these, so I'm gonna pile those two together. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab some random ones that are not too close in the color, in color to each other. And I'm gonna do one, two, three. Now remember, I'm going to do 10 going down. So I want to do three rows of fabrics and try to try to mix and match them. Uh, well, not match them, just try to mix them up, okay? And they're all five by five, so I don't have to worry about which, which way they go. I'm not even going to worry if there's a pattern uh, to try and get that pattern to go any, any which way. Just want to get my little squares all put together. As a matter of fact, if I have like a stripe this way, maybe the next time that I place it down. I'll try to, you know, do it different rather than doing it that way, maybe turn it. So you could do something like that. Okay, so I'm just going to place my little fabrics and I'm trying to grab some that I haven't already grabbed, at least in the first three rows. So this is three rows here. And then after you've made your rows, if you feel like, okay, I've got too many lights here, switch them up somehow. I haven't used this one. And let's see, I haven't used this one. This pretty brown. I like this purple, it's so pretty. I wanted to put this green one, but I felt like it was gonna to be too close to that green one, so I separated it. Okay, let's see, I can repeat that red. As you see, I cut so many squares here that maybe some of them are not even going to get repeated. Have I used this one? I have used it once. I've used this one, this one. I haven't used this one, but I'm going to switch it right here because I didn't want pink and pink together. Okay, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six rows. I need to make four more, so I'm going to move this a little bit, and I'll be back once I have my ten rows so that you can see more or less what I've done. Okay, so here I've created three rows of 10, like this, 10. And I've mixed them up as much as I can. Some of them I used them once, some of them I used them twice. And I've got a ton of little squares left over. These are gonna be good for my little 
trim that's going to go here on the edge and uh, some of them might be left over for another project so I'm going to put these away for now because what we want to do is we want to sew these rows first and we need this out of the way for now so what I'm going to do because I already have my little pattern all set up and I don't want to end up like sewing one row the next one and then trying to remember okay what, what was where so what I'm going to do on this first square here from this row here I'm going to put one pin just kind of in the middle there and then on the second row which is the middle one I'm going to put two pins or you could put like a little sticker put, put something there to mark it and then on the other one I'm going to put three pins this will remind me that this is my third row and then I'm just going to remember that I started on the right side so it doesn't matter how I lay it this will be for a second and then this will be the third row okay so to start sewing these I'm going to grab this one put it on top of that one put it on top of that on top of that like that and I'm going to do the same with the other two rows okay so here are my three rows this is my first one with one pin on there keep that together my second row with the uh, two pins and my third row with the three pins on it now I want to keep them like this this was the first one at the very top and then the one was the second and so forth so I'm going to go now to my sewing machine and I'm going to go ahead and just put this on top of this I just got to remember that the one with the three pins is where we start our next row and then I can put this one on top of this one as well because I've got this one marked with the two pins so just keep them nice like this we're going to go over to our sewing machine and we're going to start putting these together I'm going to start with the very very first top uh, square which is the first one for my first row and then I'm going to lift up the second one and lay it down so that the right sides face each other just like that and just align them to make sure and then you're going to sew down a quarter inch so put my needle down and I'm just going to do a little bit of a, of a back stitch each time and you don't have to do that but I I tend to do that just a little tiny one okay and then another one and then what you're going to do is you're just going to pull that one out now we could have our little ironing board next to us and our ironing um our iron next to us and then open these up and iron each one as we go along but we're going to save some time by not doing that what i'm going to do is i'm going to open it and i'm going to get the next one the next square from that row it's still from the same row and then I'm going to put it facing down on that second square. Again, lining the edges at the bottom here and then alongside the top here as well. So you just want to make sure that they're all aligned. Let's get going with another quarter inch. Pop it open. Grab your next square, align that because remember they're all five by five. Oh, I was already going to grab the next one. We have to pull it out. Okay, facing face to face, the right sides. I'm going to use my nails to kind of scrunch it over. Okay, I'm going to keep doing this till I have 10 of these uh, squares put together, which is one row. Right now I've got one, two, three, four, five already done, so I'm halfway there, you guys, at least with my first row. All right, so I finished my first row of 10. So there's my first row. I'm just gonna fold it like that, put it to the side. And here's the pins that start my second row. So again, I'm gonna get that first block from my second row, grab the second for my second row, face them together, and do the same thing that I just did with 10 of these little blocks. Once I hit that, I'll be at my third one. Okay, so I've got my three rows all sewn up. That's my third, my second, and my first row. So let me pop these open, and remember I said I was gonna pin on the right side, three pins for my third row. So I'll lay this out right there. 
two pins for my second row. That one's right in the middle. And then one pin for my first row. And I know that all the pins go on the right side. Okay, now, <laughs> let me point something out. Now, I had said that I wanted my runner to be about anywhere 12, 13 inches wide. So we're gonna see how wide this comes out. Right here we have five inch square. So we know that together we have 15, but because we're gonna sew quarter inch, quarter inch, that makes it half an inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, that makes another half inch. So we're gonna lose, uh, let's see, two, a one inch right here, and then a quarter inch over here and a quarter inch. So we're gonna lose one and a half inches. So we're gonna have about a 13 and a half. Okay, so for my length, I had said, I think I said I had maybe 40 inches of fabric. I don't recall what I have, but it doesn't matter because I do have another piece of fabric that I could use for the length. And, but so far right here, I've got, let's see, that's 35. And then I've got, let's see, let's do it this way. I've got another nine. So I've got about 44 inches of uh of a length of a row here and I'm going to lose a quarter inch on this side quarter inch so that's half so it's about 43 and a half so let's just think about those measurements and you go measure your table right now and decide that oh well you know what I think I want it a lot longer that's too short for me maybe you have like a really super long uh, dining room table and you need it double the length of this especially maybe if you want it to hang a little bit so just keep in mind you might have to cut 60 little squares just for the top face of your runner the bottom face obviously going to have to be some solid fabric. If you don't have enough of one solid fabric, grab two or three and patch them up together so that you have one solid piece in the back or make more little squares for the back if you want to do that. Okay, next project is to iron these out because then we're going to want to sew them. But first we need to iron them. Okay, so we're going to turn these around so that we can iron at the back first. And what I want to do is see all these little uh, allowances, little seam allowances. I want to iron them down going this way. So I want to iron them flat like this first on this first row. So we're going to put it down, put our iron on the first one, and just kind of pull it a little bit to kind of keep it straight, and then do the next one. And then you could just slide it I don't think I need to teach you how to iron, <laughs> but this is just the way that I do it. And I just pull on the fabric just slightly from the end over here. So it'll, it'll pull those seams open. Okay. Okay, so now that you've done it like that, then you can turn it around and just make sure. And you can feel right here that it's, thicker on this side than it is right here so that you know that you have your seams laying down going that way. And then just iron the top part, move to the next little section and so forth. Okay, so this first row, we ironed them going this way. On this next row, we're going to iron them going this way. So we're gonna flatten them out the other opposite direction. And then when we do the third row, we're gonna do it just like we did the first row. Iron these going flat towards the left, okay? So I'll turn this around just so you can see how pretty that looks already. All right, so we're gonna start with this one and we're gonna go the opposite way now. Okay, so I've got my three rows already ironed. So I'm gonna take this first row and I'm gonna take the middle one and flip it over so that the nice sides are facing each other. The two right sides are facing each other. So what I want to do now is I want to start aligning these seams and I'll show you close up at the sewing machine. I want to align the seam with the seam over here, making sure this allowance is going this way and making sure this allowance got ironed correctly. At this point, I could remove the, remove the little pins here. I don't need them anymore. So I'm going to pin and it's up to you if you want to go and be pinning every seam. Or if you just want to take it over to the sewing machine and just start sewing it without having to pin it. Now, somewhere along the way, your little fabric squares may have shifted one way or another. And, you know, they're not aligning. That's okay. Don't worry about it. You just want to make yourself a pretty little runner that you could just be proud of making. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start sewing this and then I'll be back and I'll put, I'll, I'll open it up like that and then I'll bring this one down like that and sew it to that, the other edge of the middle one. And then we'll have the three rows all together. Okay, so I just wanted to show you close up uh, the seam allowances and how they're resting. So I took the two pieces and if you open it up, you want to align right that with this one here. So just bring those two together and then you want to make sure that this one is laying this, I'm sorry, this way, the way that it's supposed to go just like all the other ones. And then this one is going in the opposite way just like all the other ones here. So that's where you can pin them. And the reason that you want them going in opposite ways is that if they were both going the same way, if they were both going the same way, then you're gonna have a lot of bulk right there. So you wanna just put them going in two different ways. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and start sewing this and I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam all the way down. gone ahead and I pinned these so that I know that uh, my seams are lying down the way that I want them to but you always want to make sure you check them so I just pinch this little part and I lift it up and then I just make sure that they are meeting and then I look underneath and make sure that one seam allowance is going one way and this one's going the opposite way and again I'm doing a quarter inch seam Seeing as I'm uh, going down and unpinning these, some of these in the middle, they weren't meeting up. You know, these seams were not meeting up with each other. Some of them are a little bit off, but I'm just going to go ahead and go with it because now they are matching. So somewhere along the way, I may not have uh, cut something correctly or I may not have sewn it correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and go put the third one on here. And then I'm going to open all of the three up, iron them up, and then we're going to uh, start planning out the trim that's going to go along the edges. All right, everyone, before we proceed, just to remind ourselves, my measurements, and I cut five by five squares, I've done three rows and then 10 rows that way. So I cut out 30 squares and I've sewn them at quarter inch. So I've gone ahead and I've measured and I have 13 and a half this way and I've got 44 and a half this way. Now take it into consideration that I'm going to do anywhere from a quarter inch to half an inch hem on each side. I'm gonna go with a quarter inch because I want these squares to all pretty much look the same size. So I'm gonna take away a quarter inch on this side for a seam and on that, so that's a half an inch. So the 13 and a half is gonna become 13 inches and then the same over here and on the other end. So my 44 and a half is gonna become 44. So my runner is 13 by 44, you know, more or less. So that's what 30 squares will get you. Now to that, we're still gonna add a little, little trim to the end and I do wanna add it on this other end as well. We're gonna see, uh, you may decide that maybe you just want it on each side. Okay, so to make our little uh, points here on the ends. We're going to take our little squares, the so same size, and then we're going to fold these in half and we can iron them. And then we're going to fold them again. To create these little triangles, okay? So let me get another color that might stand out on my board here. With this pink one. So we have a square, the wrong side up so that then you can fold it down and you have your pretty sides on both sides, the right sides showing on both sides. Fold it right in the center like that and then we're going to fold it again. Bring those little edges together Fold or iron that fold. And here we have another. So we're just gonna do a whole bunch of these little uh, triangles because we want these to be 
on the edge of our runner. So let me go ahead and do as many as I can for now, and then I will tell you how many I needed for this particular size. Of course, you'll just do them a little bit at a time if you, can, if you just wanna do it that way. Just make sure you got yourself enough little scraps of fabric that if you need to cut more, you have enough scraps. Okay, I'll be back once I get all these little triangles done. All right, so I've already folded a bunch of these little points, uh, little triangle things here. And uh, I calculated that I needed maybe 15 for each side. So I wanted to have at least 30 done, and I have that. Plus I'm gonna do some on the ends here, but I'll worry about that in a little bit. So what I've done here is I've already put, see the little triangles on one end and I've pinned them down. I've done that. Okay, so it doesn't matter which side you start on. So I'm just gonna switch it over now. I'm gonna show you how I'm doing that. So here's my little triangles. And I kinda wanna just, I wanna use this because this one I didn't use it on the other side. So I'm gonna make sure I use one of these. And some of these are doubled. So I'm gonna make sure, okay. I wanna use these two for sure on this side somehow. Okay, so I'm gonna put 15. I'm gonna start off by putting one on this end and then one on this other end and then I'm going to space them out so I have 15 all together. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right. And what I'm doing is I'm taking these, you see how they're folded like that? And I'm taking this little fold and I'm making sure that it's facing the right side. Now these are gonna go uh, along the edge of your um, runner like this, but we have to sew them on like this. So I'm gonna take this one with a fold and put it right up against the edge here. And I'm gonna pin that one down on the little corner there and then I'm going to do the same thing with this other one again with my fold facing the right side which is what I did when I was doing the other side when I had it turned around I was making sure all my folds were on um, the right side now you don't have to do that it doesn't matter you can just lay them down however it wouldn't matter if you had your fold facing this way or facing this way okay it doesn't matter I just want to do that just for the heck of it okay the other thing that I was doing is every time that I placed my next square, the one that I put down was always overlapping the one that was already placed down, okay? But if we're working from this side this way and this side this way to kind of meet up in the middle, then I want to make sure I put it underneath. Okay, so just randomly, and I, I'm trying to grab them. This one's already been used on that side, so I don't want to use it again uh, I'm trying to place these um, just wherever right now and then I can look at them and see well you know I don't have two colors that are look the same next to each other also I didn't put this down on like the for example the square I didn't put it down on top of that square but I want to put it down somewhere else so I'm just gonna align this one somewhere right here in the middle and then just keep filling as I go along and I'm also making sure that they align both all these little raw edges here are all aligned because I'm doing a quarter inch seam. So I want to make sure that they're all grabbing. So I'm not pinning them down yet. I only pin the edge ones first. Okay, let's see. I like this uh, brown one somewhere around here. I like this one with a fold this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. One more. One more. Okay, this one's different enough. We'll put that one. Okay, so now we want to pin these. So let me put these out of the way, and then we'll decide how many we need for each end. But first, we're going to get these on here and pin them on. So what I'm going to do is this, I'm just going to eyeball them, or if you want to measure and make sure that you know you've got the same exact amount of space between every point, you can go ahead and do that. I'm just eyeballing mine, kind of going with what I did on the opposite side. And what I'm doing is I'm pinning right where they overlap each other and the fabric underneath. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do that all the way down. And I can see already right here where I have to move this one a little bit, just, just a bit. I might have to do some adjusting over here. 
Once I've got them where I want them, start pinning. And then we'll do the two ends. And then we'll sew all those little tips to our runner. All right, so I've already done the end right here. And I've decided that I need four on the end. Okay, so I've got all these other ones on one edge, as you can see right there. And then I've got the other edge there. And they're all pinned. And then I went around the corner. So now, I, or the edge, the very end edge. So now I need to do this one. Okay, let me get this all nice and flat on my table so I don't poke myself. I've poked myself too many times already with the pins. Okay, so now we wanna do this side. And what I want, what I need is I need four of them, but I want them to all be different. All right, so I've chosen these four to go on this other end, and this is the way that I'm going to do it. Now everything was overlapping this way on top of each other, and then they are overlapping like this. So I'm gonna overlap going like that, that way. It's overlapping like that, and then like that, and it goes into a circle. So over here it does the same thing where it was overlapping like that. So then I continued and it's overlapping like this, and then it's overlapping like that. So we're going like in a little circle. So the way you remember is this one is overlapping here. So then you're gonna want this blue one to overlap this green one. And remember, the fold is always going to be on the right. So you're looking at it right now, it's on your right. It's upside down for me, so it's on my left. So I'm gonna unpin this corner and then I'm gonna line this one right to the corner and then place this one on top. Now it barely overlaps it, but there is a little bit of an overlap. And then we can just pin that and then just make sure this one is nice and straight there. Now we're gonna do the same with this one, with a fold to, wait, let's see, yeah, to this side, which is your right. So this one's gonna overlap this one. I'm just gonna take the pin off for now, and then we're gonna put it right on the edge, and then pin that right where they all overlap. You know, this one's overlapping that one and the fabric underneath it. You want to catch all of that. Okay, so now we know the fold is on this side, which is your right. We want this one to overlap. So we're just going to just put it there for now. The fold on this side, you want this one to overlap. So here we're going to put them like that. And then all I'm going to do is just kind of do a little bit of a moving around where I'm satisfied. Okay, once they're like that, now I can pin. And of course, I wanna pin it where I'm looking at it from this side, like you're the way you're looking at it. So I can make sure all of these are aligned. So just make sure they're aligned before you pin them. I'm just gonna do that for now from this angle, but I'll probably turn it around and adjust it. Okay, pin all that, and we have one more over here. Okay, so now that I've got all my little points all the way around, I'm gonna go ahead and sew right over, and I'm gonna go a quarter inch in. If I have to go in a tiny bit more, I will, but I'm gonna try and stay at the quarter inch. Okay, I try not to go over that, but I wanna make sure that all the fabric layers are caught in there. So I might have to unpin and move things around as I'm sewing. So this will take me a little while to do, but I will sew them all the way around and we'll be back.
right, so I've already completed sewing all the way around and gotten all these little points sewn to the edge, as you can see there. But I'm not gonna open them up yet and then iron them. I need to sew my backing, what's gonna go in the back of here, and add some batting in between or felt or whatever other fabric I wanna put between to give this a little bit of body. But here you can see how cute that would look all the way around. Okay, so now I've chosen this fabric and I've got my quilters batting right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and align this by first putting my, down my quilters batting. And I've cut it a little bit bigger than what my quilt is, or rather my runner is. Just a little bit wider, just a little bit longer. Okay. And then I'm gonna lay this fabric and I'm gonna lay it with the right side up because I want this to end up on the inside. So it has to be facing the wrong side of the fabric. So just align your fabric over it. And then we can put our runner on it, but we're gonna put our runner facing down and we're gonna put it with all our little points still inside without them being brought out. So I'm gonna put it facing down like that. And I want to make sure that all my little points on the edge are all inside. This is why I cut this other fabric a little bit bigger so that I can see it. Because what's important is that this top part here is all nice and everything is tucked under there. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and pin this. So just pin it in different areas. And I'm going to leave, because I'm going to sew all the way around, and I'm going to go a quarter inch uh, into this particular fabric, the one on the top. We're not going to worry about this one here. But I want to so right next to that other stitch line that I have there from when I sewed all these little points there, I wanna go, but I wanna make sure that I'm on the inside towards this, okay? Not on the outside edge, but on the inside. And I wanna make sure that I go right along it and that way I can make sure that I am still catching all of that. Okay, let's pin it a little bit more and I'm going to sew all the way around, but I'm going to leave an opening because I have to turn this inside out. And I'm going to leave an opening just enough where I can reach my hand inside. So I'm going to put two pins with the heads on the outside to remind myself that that is where my opening is. Right here. This is my little opening. Let's measure so we can see about how big that is. It's about eight inches. A little opening about eight inches. So put these pins facing the other way towards the outer edge and then your other pins facing, you know, the, the little pin tops facing this way. And of course I'm gonna start right here, right here. So all the way around, back stitch it a couple of times here to make sure that this doesn't pop open on me when I am reaching in there to turn it around. Go all the way around. When I get over here to this other pin, I'm gonna back stitch it a couple of times as well. I'm sewing, this is my my seam line, I'm going inside of it just a little bit, just a tad. Okay, so now that I've stitched it all the way around and I've left an opening here, I can go ahead and turn it over. But before I do, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the excess fabric and then I wanna trim any little thick corners. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm 
I'm going to take these little corners and I'm also going to trim the little corners right here. Making sure that I don't cut where I sewed. Okay, so I'm going to continue doing that and then we're going to go ahead and just reach in there, turn it all inside out, and then we'll show you the quilt. Okay, so now I want to reach in between my two fabrics. Not my batting, but, but between my two fabrics. And we're going to turn this over. And I can actually just grab those little points that are in there and pull on them. And that helps to bring out those little corners. So we're just going to turn all this around. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to iron this. And I have my, my opening is on this side. Let me turn this around. This is what it looks like in the back. Okay, so here's the front. It's looking really cute. I love it. Okay, so here's the opening right here. So we're going to make sure that when we are going to top stitch all this all the way around, that we're going to make sure that this little opening here you know, it's fold up with your fingers. We're gonna make sure that that does overlap the stitching that's already on there. So actually when I top stitch it, I'm gonna top stitch it from this side, more than likely. Um, no, I think I wanna do it from the other side. Okay, so I just wanna make sure that that is right on the edge and covers And I am going to sew again all along the edge here. And I'm gonna iron it first. Get it all nice and flat. And top stitch uh, about an eighth of an inch or so because I wanna make sure that I capture this fabric on this side, okay? So just make sure that when you come around here, you know, look underneath and make sure that this is all gonna get sewn as you go down with your sewing machine and get that okay and then we'll be done first i'm going to iron it go top stitch it and then if you wish you could also do some more top stitching go across any one of these little panels and give it more of a quilted feel to it or you can do some hand stitching if you want do a little pattern a little swirly pattern if you happen to have that on your you know you have a sewing machine that'll actually quilt things do that but this is what it's looking like okay we'll be back When I have completed my runner all I did was stitch around the edge you know all the way around on the outside edge I did not do any stitching in the middle I thought I'd go ahead and leave it it is late so I think I am done so let me tell you my runner uh, ended up being about 13 inches by 44 this is not counting the what this adds to it you know the little trim on the outside uh, but the inside did so I used 30 blocks to do the body here and then I used 38 to do the little triangular bit so you're going to need to cut 68 five by five squares to do the size that I have done okay all right so that's it everyone I am going to go ahead and give myself a big old thumbs up I hope that you too will give me a big old thumbs up and that you enjoyed this please leave a nice comment down below let me know what you think you have any suggestions I did have some little squares left over because I cut extra just in case so let me know if you want to see something different and if I know how to do it or if I can figure it out I will try <laughs> all right everyone I hope you enjoyed this again and uh, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and once you do so please hit the notification bell so you get notified of when my videos go up which is twice a week and once in a while I add a, a little extra vlog maybe even a little extra craft during this time so there we go everyone share your social medias and as always enjoy